Hi, this is Beth from Let's Speed, and I'm here to show you how to do the Celtic Knot Bracelet. This is an example of what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we do have kits for this in the store, and some of you have already picked up your kits, so if that's the case, you can follow your directions along with me. I have Carly on the phone with me here, um, and this is my first video, so uh, please bear with me, and I hope you enjoy this project. Uh, if you don't have a kit and you'd like to get one, um, I suggest that uh, you check our website, letsbead.com, and under um, the shopping part of it, you, we will be listing these kits. We have other kits available as well. Um, we are open today till four, um, but after that we will be closed because of the government mandates. Okay, so um, to start off with, um, let me just tell you about the colors that we have. We've done this project once before, so we do have some other colors available, and they should be on the website, but the new colors are, um, this is a um, brick red and gold color, and that is with a gold button. This is a copper and bronze, and that's with a copper button. And the last new option is this metallic gray and uh, metallic turquoise, and that's got a silver button. We're going to be finishing that today, so um, you'll be seeing more of that a little bit later. So let's put those aside. So the weave can be a little bit tricky to um, learn initially, so what I've got set up here is I wanted to use some thick cord so you could follow along with me. Let me see if I can get it a little bit better in camera. Okay. Um, let me see if we can just do a little adjustment here. Okay, so this is actually um, silver silk because I didn't have any rope, so I've got some silver silk here that we're gonna to use to demonstrate the weave. Um, again, if you have your kits, you'll see the graphic with the, the, um, the knotting pattern, so you can follow along with me. Um, we're gonna start off with um, a left-hand cord. This is my left-hand side, so this is the left-hand cord, and then the right-hand cord. In this situation, um, we have a brown on the left and a pink on the right just for a really good contrast. Um, you, we're going to be working with more cords in the actual kit, um, but this will give you a clearer uh, look at um, what we're doing with the cords. There's two knots. There's a left-hand loop and there's a right-hand loop. So um, I'm going to show you how to do both of them. Um, and. Uh, we're going to start with the left hand knot, the left hand loop, using our left hand cord. Okay, so we're always going to start by bringing left hand cord and bringing, looping it up and around and over the opposite cord. So we've got a left hand loop which is coming down over the right hand cord, over the right hand cord, and then over itself and then headed to the left. This is the left hand loop. Okay. Now this is going to be our working cord. It's the other side. So in the left hand loop, we're going to be picking up our right hand cord. Okay, so we're going to start with this cord, pick it up by the end, and we're going to bring that up over. This is an over. And we're going to bring this under it's an over, under, over, under, over, under, then over, and then the last one under, and over. So let's just go over the way this went. And again, with the, our kits, we've got this written out so you can follow it each time. Um, you've got the right-hand cord coming down here, and it went over, under, over, 
under, over. Okay, now we're gonna start tightening those up to make our knot. And I'm gonna start with that looking loose but this is the first knot. This is with the left hand loop and that's the, what it's gonna look like. Um, we're gonna to want to snug that up. We're gonna to need to bring that up and this is just tape. That's not what we're gonna do with our, our um, bracelet but it's just to hold it in place. So we're gonna to need to bring this cord up so we can do our next one. So I'm gonna, if we wanna tighten this, Get that back in where he's supposed to be. If we want to tighten this, we need to pull this part up and tighten. To do this one, we're going to pull this part up and we're going to tighten. I'm not going to tighten these real tight for the um, for the silver silk because I want you to be able to see the knotting. So that's the end of our left hand loop. Okay. Now we're gonna do the right hand loop. This is our right hand cord. And this is um, still our left hand. So this is, this is going to be the one that we need to do our loop. So we're gonna do the same thing, but on the other side, we're gonna go over over and over and then to the right so right hand cord going over 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 and then cord to the right then in this one the left hand cord is going to be your working cord and you're going to want to go i'm going to have you go i'm going to go over and the next is under The next is going to be over here, under here, and the last one is over. So it is, I went over, under, over, under, over. And I'm going to pull that gently to tighten that up. And you can see that looks somewhat like this one, but it's actually going the opposite direction. And we're gonna tighten that up, bring this up. I'll show you this more with the leather, but you're gonna, we're gonna need to tighten this one up. So we're gonna pull on this one gently and hold this to bring it up, okay? And then tighten. You always wanna tighten a little bit gently don't tight, tighten up real hard because you'll just knot it and and lose your, your lose your place um, just go slow initially so you can uh, keep your bearings um, okay and then this one getting one up, up a little bit so I'm going to uh, hold this still and then bring this up and tighten So those are our first two loops, um, the left hand and the right hand, and um, we'll keep, uh, keep doing another um, couple of these before we switch to the leather, just to get the hang, the hang of it. A um, couple things here while we can see it larger. Um, question always comes up, how do I know, keep track of whether I need to do a left hand loop or a right hand loop? Well, one thing is you can always start with left. So by counting, you'd know it would be left, right, left, so forth, because it's always gonna be alternating left, right, left. But probably a more consistent way to figure it out is if you look at these two cords coming down, one of them is above the loop. This one's coming off above the loop. Well, this one is coming off under the loop. So you're always going to be doing the loop on the side where it's above. 
right there. And I'll, I'll show you that again. But this is, we did left, right. This is gonna be left where it's coming above. Okay. So we're gonna do left hand loop. It's gonna go over, over the co other cord, the right hand cord, over the right hand cord, then over itself and over to the left. Um, now right's gonna be our working cord. And we're gonna go over, under, over. And you see here, um, we're starting to make a loop down and we're actually going between the two cords. Don't be going over to the side. We're coming down between these two cords to make the loop. So over, under, over, under, and over. So it was, again, over, under, over, under, over. It's not going to went up. Sometimes it falls right in place and sometimes it doesn't look right at all until you kind of fiddle with it to get the cords going straight. You can always just pull it out and do it again, but if you take some time and kind of straighten up the cords, you may see like I just did there that it really is going in the right direction. So it's tighten that one up a little bit. And in general, what we're trying to do is keep those loops about the same going down same size from left to right. Bang that. Okay. Next, we're going to do um, the right hand loop. And why are we going to do that? I'm going to do that because left, right, left, and also this is the side that's coming up above. This cord is going down below. So if it's coming up above, that's the side I'm going to do my loop. Okay, so we're gonna go right hand loop. So we're gonna be over the left hand cord, over the left hand cord, over itself. Left hand's gonna be your working cord. We're gonna go over, under, over between the two working cords, under, and over. And tighten up. And the nice thing about the video is this one is a little bit trickier, but you can, you know, pause it once the live is done. You can replay it, Bob, as you go and do each step. Yeah, exactly. And take your time, you know, to figure out where you're going. And um, I would recommend either looking at the video or looking at your written instructions or both so you can get your bearings because it takes a while to get that pattern um, rhythm kind of down in your head, but uh, eventually it'll be second nature to you. Okay, so we have four loops here. We have a left, right, left, right. And there's a couple things before we move on to the leather I want to point out to you. Um, one of them is... Let me turn this up a little bit here. Nice thing about the silver silk is actually it moves pretty easily. It doesn't get hung up on its on itself. So I can kind of move it around a little bit for you. Okay. Um, just a couple things about the pattern that I wanted to show you. And you'll see this probably a little bit more with the leather. But if you look at the pink... Let's say, look at the pink on the pot, the bottom two, on the bottom two loops, which is this loop and this loop. You'll see that it makes this pattern, and I'll trace it with my pen. It comes here, a loop up here, down here, and a loop up here. And it ends up looking somewhat like a heart. Um, and 
Then the brown one, if you look at the brown one, same thing. It's a heart almost going in the other direction. Comes up here, over there, down here, and then over here. So it's almost like two intertwining hearts. And the same thing is up here, and that's gonna be your pattern. And sometimes I think it actually looks like kind of two intertwined pretzels. Um, but for me, it helps me get my bearings that the um, that the, I'm doing the pattern right. And it also helps me look to see if I've got the, um, the loops tightened symmetrically. Um, because if you can see kind of that the that the, the shapes are in there, it's a little bit easier to work with. And um, so I just kind of wanted to sh to show you kind of that that heart shaped in in the different colors and how um, that makes your your Celtic knot design. So um, yeah, so um, and you'll see that again in the leather. So. I'm gonna move on to the leather um, because then you'll be seeing the finished product. So let me take my silver silk off. And when you're working with the, the leather, the what we've used for these bracelets, this is one millimeter leather and um, the instructions are for two yards of two different colors. Let me use the, show you the gold one because it's a little more contrasty. So there's two yards on this one of the brick red, and then there's two yards of the um, gold, and they are um, one millimeter leather. Um, you can use other sizes of leather, but we're going to have to get the leather through the button. So remember, you have to. Um, be able to get your leather through your button. Um, uh, the bracelet I'm going to be making is exactly the same with you is exactly the same design, but I'm actually using 1.5 leather. Again, I, it's not quite as fine, so I thought you would see it better. Um, but the design is exactly the same, and unless you put them side by side, you probably wouldn't even notice. Um, Putting it together, uh, you have choices. You can use a macrame board, which is what we're gonna be doing. Um, this is the standard size macrame board and we uh, sell those at the store. Um, very useful for a lot of woven bracelets. Um, and then we have, these are new. These are the, um, I think they call them mini macrame boards. So much more portable. This, that, this would be perfect for this uh, design because you can, if, if you're, um, let's say you were doing a really long bracelet um, or a necklace, you can always move your bracelet up too if, if the board isn't big enough. But these are two choices for the macrame board. Um, this is the one we're going to be using. One of the things that I'll tell you is that I never use the macrame boards when I make these at home. I just do them freehand and just do a lot of, um, of uh, adjusting um, with a, a attachment to a board. But you're gonna figure out what works for you and definitely for demoing, and I think it's better to have it on the board. So this is my cord. For the bracelet, as I said, we're, used, we're using two different colors. So here I have a teal and brown cord this is a little bit bigger than your kits. It's 1.5 instead of one millimeter. And um, I did more than two yards of each because it's a bigger leather. It's gonna take more um, to finish off. I, this is my button and I pre-strung my button because it's kind of tight with these buttons to get two strands of the 1.5 through. So um, this, you can use this type of button or you can use a shank button like this, but whatever you decide, you have to be able to get your leather through um, two, of your, two of the strands through the leather. And what you do is you thread your leather, your, sorry, your button onto the leather and you're going to position that, 
that um, button right in the middle. So this button is right at my halfway point. It's gonna divide my leather in two. And this is when it gets knotted up. But we can get that undone and we can start weaving. Beth, can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you um, put this on the board, um, if you don't need the measurements, can you put the board upside down so there's less distraction in the background with the lines? Absolutely, that's a great idea. Thank you. Here we go. And I'm gonna um, attach this with T-pins. These are T-pins. Uh, we sell them at the store. Um, they go into the foam board and um, let me see if I can get this so that my button isn't moving. One of moving. my favorite things about this type of board is that it's like self-healing. So it doesn't, when you use pins on it, it doesn't leave like giant holes afterwards. Yeah, this is a used board and you wouldn't even know it by looking at it. Right. And it's nice that it, uh, typically you would use the measurement side, but for video purposes, you're not going to, but mm -hmm. it's nice to have that because you don't need rulers that's already on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see if this will start okay. Starting, like with most projects, is probably the most challenging part. So it is. <laughs> But um, the, it's no different the start here from the middle or the finish. So, um, okay, so we want to keep our button up at the top. And then you'll see that even though we had two types of leather, two colors, because of, the way of threading the button on there, we actually looks like we have four strands, but it's just because we're in the middle. There's no cut there. So I've got two strands coming off this side and two strands coming off this side. And these are gonna work just like what we were doing with left-hand strand and right-hand strand, except that we're working with these two together. So these, this is gonna to stay together all the time and this is gonna to stay together all the time. And that's what's gonna make the nice pattern in the bracelet. One thing I'm gonna say is that um, when I wrote the instructions last year, the instructions tell you to put a knot at the base of the button. And um, what I found after doing it this year was you don't really need to do that because the button will stay in, in place just like this with, um, can you see that? With, uh, without the, the big knot. And it actually lies much flatter if you don't have that big chunky knot there. So you can do it that way. If you've already put your knot in, no problem at all. Um, but this button is secure, and um, I really like the way it's staying flat this way. Okay, so you'll remember that we start with a left-hand loop, or that's the way I like to do it. And we're going to go over the right-hand cords. Over, and then up, and over, and then over the same cord again. So try to keep the cords together. You can see them there, but it's the same thing. It's over, over, over. That's your first loop and then over to the left. Okay, so that's, that's the start of our left-hand loop. Now you're going to take, I suggest you take the very ends, don't grab it in the middle, take the very ends of your working cord, which in this case is gonna be your right, Got those right by the by the, the very end. And I'm actually gonna put my left hand so it's easier for me to come through with the left hand. So, okay, so this is our over under part. So I'm gonna take this and this is gonna go over. This is gonna go under. Try to keep that shape that you just made by holding with your left hand, or just with your, with your hand. So it's over, under, over. 
and then we're going to go under these two and then the last isn't over so it's harder to see that's why i did it with a with the um silver silk initially but you've got an an over which is over here an under which is under here an over which is over uh, under over under over so it's the same thing and then we're gonna pull those through pull gently don't snap them right up because they'll get knotted and you have more of a problem sorting it out and to untangle but we're gonna tighten tighten up a little bit and we should get the same type of shape now of course they don't tighten equally so sometimes you have to pull on the turquoise and sometimes you have to pull on the brown to get them even but hopefully you can see that it's got the same type of, of uh, knot there. So we're on the right track, everything went in the right place. However, there's something different when you've got the two uh, compared to the one cord. You'll see, this is one that I made with the same colors yesterday. And you'll see one thing I just, I didn't say, but you have to decide is which of your colors is going to be on the outside. You've got the same amount of leather for both, but you have to decide, do I want my turquoise on the outside or do I want the brown on the outside? In both of these, we're going to do the turquoise on the outside. And um, when we're making our knots, the um, cord will twist. So um, before I've got it really tightened up, I want to try to get that that turquoise all the way around on the outside. And you know, by the outside, I hope you can see that this is the outside, and it continues. You're gonna if you can follow all the way that your cord goes, you'll have you'll be able to see that the turquoise is always on the same side. So let's see how if this is working here. Well, here we've got the, the turquoise and the brown coming through. And you can see this is what I consider outside, not the inside, the outside of your bracelet. So this cord has twisted to the inside. So my turquoise is on the inside. So we have to fix that. And the fixing is simply twisting and rolling that cord so the turquoise is coming onto the right side. It just takes some fiddling, you know, way to rush it. But you can see I've already got the, the turquoise coming in the right direction here. Twists again up here. So again, twist my cords around. And this one is all in the right place. This one however, is not. It is brown on the outside, brown on the outside. And you don't want that. It's gotta be the same on either. So let's tug on that turquoise. And that did it. I'm gonna pull this up. And this one we're gonna want pretty snug because this is the bracelet, so. Could get that all the way up. And you can decide how tight you want this. I tend to braid it pretty tight, but some people like them kind of loose. Um, I think for this, it's okay. I'm gonna pull these out just briefly because I can see that my cord there is uneven and I'll put that back, but I just want my button to be even. And I'll tighten up. my cord so that the turquoise and the brown are laying right next to each other. 
So that's a reasonable knot in there, like that. And I'm just gonna tuck my T-pins in again to hold that steady. So that's our first knot with the two strands. And we're gonna do the same thing now on the right. The left hand strand over here, right hand strand over here, the right hand loop, we're gonna go over, over, and then over to the right. One thing about doing it with a board is you can hold this. See, I'm holding this because these will be all over the place. So um, it really does help to hold this down because they're not going to stay there on their own and you're going to need to see which way you're headed. Got my cord with my other hand and we're going to do the usual over, under, oh, over, un, under, over, over, under. Over and under. Using my other hand to get through there. And then over. Tighten it up. And I can already tell that that's looking like it's the right shape which is a good sign. So we're going to just bring that up and pull on this one, stabilize on this other side so I can tighten up. If you're not able to tighten it up, it's because you're not holding on to the opposite side and it just won't. If I just pull this, it's not going to tighten. I have to hold on to this and pull. Okay, and before I tighten up, remember I've got to get that uh, turquoise on the outside, so we're going to twist, twist, and you sometimes have to pull a little bit on. If you pull on the inner one, it's going to, it may naturally kind of go in place. Okay, so that one, this one's already on the outside. We're going to do the other one, and again, if I pull this brown cord up, it's going to slip right in place. right where it needs to be. So we're all set for that one to just do some final tightening. And if it's too tight, it won't want to be pulled. But you can always tug a little bit and, and loosen it up. Okay, so we've got our first two. And let me get another couple going here. Left hand loop. Why? Because this one is coming up over, coming up over the knot, while this one's under the knot. So this is where we're going to do our loop. Over, 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 and to the left. All right. Got my hand here stabilizing it. And oh, I'm gonna be going over this side. I'll just go over that one going to the to the side first. So we're gonna go over, under, between the two, over. And this one's getting out of my spot here, but over, under and then over the loop. Okay. Now sometimes when you do this, you'll say, I've, I know I went in the right direction and you'll look at it and then it'll look like just a horrible mess because it does tend to twist and sometimes it just twists in absolutely the wrong directions. But take your time and try to undo the, the, the twisting and um, have them running side by side. And more often than not, you'll find out that you just, you did it right, it's just got a little twisted. Okay, and so this is in the right shape, but now we wanna get that 
turquoise on the outside, turquoise on the outside, same sort of thing. Sometimes it just goes right into spot. I don't think I've ever done any knot that when I finished the knot, they were all in the right position. It's got to be something against, you know, some sort of statistical impossibility that you can't possibly get it right on the first try. I don't know, but it's not too hard to get it in there. Okay, and then this one, yeah, I'm twisting it. This is way out of place. That's where my turquoise is, and I, this one's hanging up way up here. So what I'm gonna do with this guy is I'm gonna pull him, see whether I can get him in the right spot. It helped a little bit, but I still have to twist here. Okay. Okay, let me see. Almost there. All right, so we've got our third knot in shape, and that's looking pretty good. Um, well, I do the one, this other one on the right, and I'll give, try to give you some other options. Um, I talked to you about the, this is right hand, and we're going the um, over, over, over. Um, I've done this with one millimeter leather. Um, I've done it with one and a half millimeter leather. A nice look is instead of using the two colors, use three colors, and then you get three different colors on each side, and that's real pretty. You know, you can get a lot more variety. I did that with one millimeter leather, and as I recall, it still worked with the button pretty good. Over, under, over, under here. I haven't as yet had much luck with waxed cotton um, or Ceylon. Uh, the Ceylon was real stiff and um, the cotton, it was just real hard to get it to, it was much harder to um, manipulate the knots. So I'm sure that there's a um, vegan alternative here that could be used. And if you, you know, when you, a lot of people after they've done this will do a, a whole bunch of them. I know if you're looking at this for the first time, you may not believe that, but it does get kind of kind of uh, addictive of just weaving them together and a fun project to do uh, multiples of. But um, if you are able to, you know, if you do try them with different materials or, you know, different styles, um, you know, drop us a line, send us a picture. We'd love to see how it works out. Um, I've seen some really interesting ones. Okay, so again, just here I'm just trying to get the, the turquoise on the outside. And we'll have a full four going here. Okay. So a couple things I want to point out at this point. Let me just hold it up a little bit. Um, One thing is, I want to show you that um, heart or that pretzel that I was telling, talking to you about. You see that the, this we've got a loop that starts, let's say, starts here, all the way through here, up here, and down, and that's kind of like a heart shape. And then the one below it starts here, and then like that again, another heart shape. Same thing on this one; they're, they're in pairs, heart shape, or again, like a like a twisted pretzel and then that under one goes like that. So you see that design forming, which is really nice. Um, this is why you have to do the right and the left-hand sides, because if you don't do a right, uh, left and a right, and a left and a right, or right and left, right and left, is it'll start turning to one side. So by doing it this way, um, you get a nice straight bracelet. Um, and if you have gotten your, your order wrong, you will actually see that somehow it's not turning right. So go back and look at your at your hearts and you'll probably see that it's missing it someplace. Um, another thing I'll point out to you is um, some people like these, this knot 
right up against this knot and other people will have them much looser. And that's just up to you. I happen to like them like right next to each other, but that's really up to you and the style that you like. Um, okay, well, um, Carly, do you think we should do a couple more before I show the finishing? Yeah, maybe do a couple more and then and then show how to finish. Okay. I just want to mention too, I, I would imagine that it would be harder doing this if you didn't use two colored cords. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. I think that was one of the problems I had when I was using wax cotton was I was using um, one color of it. And that was, it was, this was quite a while ago and that made it difficult. But I think yeah. that, that especially that when the um, trying to get the cords to run straight because when you, it really helps. And that's one of the reasons why I did this with, a, with high contrast colors too. Again, we're doing over, and I'm doing this. Make sure I did the right side. Yeah, I'm doing this to a left hand. I see that right. Yeah, left hand loop because the cord's coming up over on the left hand side. So this is an over, 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 under, over. This knot, you'll see it in um, in books or you know maybe on Pinterest, um, called the Josephine knot. I can't really, don't really know who Josephine is, but um, that's one thing it's called, but um, I'm sure you all know that um, Celtic knots are kind of famous for all their really pretty designs that are not only done with weaving, but in artwork. Um, I think they're just a real pleasing design for jewelry. And, uh, Thank you for a second. Yeah. Um, Jennifer's asking if the video will be available online after this for the time reference. And um, yes, it, it will. It'll remain on our page. And that's going to be on the the main page, right, Carly? Not the, the yep, group page. Right on our Facebook page. Okay. It'll stay up. I also shared it in the Facebook group, mm -hmm. so it will stay in there as well. Good point. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we've had several people ask for a video and. People learn different ways, but hopefully this will give you something to refer to um, while you get your pattern, your pattern down. Yeah. I might, and do not, I can't tell you how long this took me to, to learn. <laughs> I am not a natural born a weaving learner. I didn't even do macrame when I was growing up. So, um, the only reason I took this on was I liked the way it looked and the knot itself, and um, I was determined to make a project for the for the for the store. And um, I didn't really have good directions on which way to go. I, um, I had a directions on the left sided, but not the right sided. So I kind of had to figure that out on my own. But now I really love doing it. Um, okay, so this, this is a right-sided, so we have our cord coming over to the right, and I've got my left hand wor left-handed working cord, and we're going to go over here, under here, over here, under here, and never split the cords. You know, if if you don't see your two cords working together, you know it's not right. Um, so that's why I hold them at the very tip like that. Um, I have had people kind of tape the cords together, you know, and do different things like that. I've had people who kind of tape this down. Um, I've had people who take the knot and let's say when they're halfway through, rather, because they're having trouble holding it in place, they'll put the tape down so they can study it and figure out which way they're going. I think that's fine too, because once you figure it out, um, it'll, you'll be able to do it without those aids. Okay, so again, twisting those to get in the right direction. This one is looking good. This one is brown on the outside, not so good. So pull this out. And outside, twist. 
Okay, and we need to tighten this up. So by tighten, tightening, you pull the ends, but to bring it up, remember you're gonna pull on one side, stabilize on the other, bring your loop up, and then tighten. And then this side has to come up, stabilize, bring your loop up, and tighten. Oh, but the brown cord snuck out there. So again, we've done, um, we happen to have done six here, and you'll see that kind of heart-like pattern developing, which is, which is so pretty. And as, um, as you come along, you have even more of a design. Now, believe it or not, can you see that? This one that I've got in my hands, this is actually the same cord. Um, same size cord. So you can see this one I'm doing a whole lot looser, but that's really up to you, which you like. Um, um, nothing wrong with it. Either way, it just gives you the different, uh, the different look of either um, a bigger knot or a smaller knot. Obviously, the smaller the cord, the smaller you can get your knots. Um, for people who like doing fine work, might be fun to do it with some really, really tiny cord. So let me talk a little bit about finishing up here. Um, so you wanna be making your, um, your knots so that it's um, long enough for your wrist size. Um, and best way to do that is to just to try it on. So let me put this to the side. Um, I'm just going to put this to the side, and if we need to go back to it, I can, but I want to show you. This is one of the kit colors that's almost done. Um, this one, um, you know, this will be your, what it looks like when you've gotten it to a longer length. And then try it over your wrist. Have somebody help you if you need to. Much better than measuring, because, I mean, you can measure if you want, but you really need to see how it's fitting on your wrist. And then this for me is gonna work. Um, I need to uh, make room for my buttonhole and where I'm holding it right now, that's gonna be my buttonhole. If I wanted it a lot looser or at a bigger wrist, um, let's say um, if it looked like this, um, I wanted it like this, then I'd do another knot. If it was hanging over my wrist like that, you can always take off, take out the knot. It's really easy to take out a knot. So this is your sizing time. Do it now. Don't um, wait till you've got the whole buttonhole and the finishing done. Now's the time to size it and see whether it works for you. So ending it's really easy. You've probably done this a lot with other bracelets. You take your four cords together. All four. Can, can I just interrupt yep. you here real quick? Somebody's asking if um, there should be audio. I just want to ask, is, is everybody hearing okay or did the audio go? Um, if you are having trouble, just I just recommend exiting out and then going back in. Um, I just typed a comment to reply to, the, to Jennifer. But if anybody can hear us, if you would just reply, yes, you can hear us, just so we know. Thanks. Very good point. I hope so. If not, we'll definitely fix it, so. Let me just turn the volume up on mine real quick here. Yep, it's working on my end, I can hear it. So, okay. so Facebook is a glitchy lately, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's a shame, but ho hopefully it's, it's working and it'll be there for, for the, any playbacks. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna make a regular, uh, uh, just a loop and just a regular overhand knot. Pull all those four strands together. And they're gonna tighten that up, leaving enough space for that button to go through. I always test the button. It's okay if it's a little snug with leather, I think, because leather tends to loosen up. Okay, okay she's got audio back. Yay. She accidentally <laughs> came back, so Good. it should be fine. 
Okay, so this is twisted, but, oh, there we go. Um, so I just made my knot, and um, so I've got my buttonhole already there, really easy. And um, if it's not working at this point, just take it out, um, redo it, get it the size you want. But, okay. And then as far as the, the final um, result, the, the, the little ends, um, you can do a lot of different things with ends. What I'm gonna show you that we do um, and the way the kits are set up is um, we, I cut the ends to um, about three quarters to an inch length and I cut them kind of at different lengths um, and then I just glue, these are little triangle beads, and I just glue those little triangle beads to the end just to give a little cute little tassel effect there. Um, another option would be um, you could just do a, a simple knot, and that's often done with the tassel, just do a, a little overhand knot on each end and then trim them. Um, or um, if you don't, if you're, if the glue isn't setting up, I'll show you this, if the glue isn't setting up and the, if there, it's giving you trouble, tie a knot, put on the bead, tie another knot, and you know your bead's gonna stay in place without the, 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 uh, the, um, without the glue. So. I have two questions yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of glue did you use? Well, what I'm gonna use today is the, um, the Loctite Super Glue Ultra Control Gel. And okay. the reason I've used this before is because it sets up fast. Um, okay. When I did some of these, I used the um, hypo cement that we have here, um, yeah. but that takes a little while longer. And I had the um, the beads falling off the tassels, um, oh. so I kind of had to hold them longer. And okay. uh, so um, you could use a little like a toothpick and an E six thousand too. That would work, but. That's because it's thicker, you know, it might stay in place a little better. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, well, I was, the, the triangle um, beads that you used, when you, when you put those on, did you put the glue on the leather or inside the beads? I've done it both ways. I've done it both ways. <laughs> I've done it both ways. Do you have a do you okay. have you found one way works better than the other? I don't. No, I, I was curious. Yeah, I didn't yeah I, I I um I've done it both ways. Um, the other thing you get into when you're working with leather, as you know, is that um, the leathers will be even though it says one millimeter leather, it'll be different thickness. Yeah. So some of them. Um, will be nice, you know, almost like a little snug, and other ones are going to be all moving around. Um, so there's, you know, I, by putting that one on, I can tell there's, there's, to me it looks like, to me it looks like that gray leather is wider than the blue leather, and that's even though they're both one millimeters. So, um, and that's just the natural variation from the manufacturers, but when you're working with leather, it can really make a difference as far as what fits what and size and and whether it's gonna go through your button or not. Um, we deal with that a lot. But as you, this seems to be working so far okay. It's not, I'm just by putting this on the, a little dab on the end where I can, where you can see it and I can see it and if it does slip down a little bit when it dries, you can always just trim that end off. I've done that, you know, it's, it's easy to just trim off with a little scissor. Oh, yeah. Very easy to trim, but except I'm gluing my fingers together. <laughs> That's not the way to end the day. Well, this one, maybe I'll try it a little more there. I just like the look of the beads on the end without a knot. It just looks really... Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then something about the triangles with the the faceting, and it's really, it's kind of kind of cute. But you could use other beads. 
metal beads. Glue on your fingers, it's a little harder. One more. <clears throat> so just as I'm finished getting this one on, just to remind you, we do have kits available um, because after today, the store needs to be closed because of the um, government restrictions. Um, we do have an online store and we hope to be adding quite a bit more for you there so keep an eye on that and carly will they're not on yet we we i think we probably have some of the other colors carly yeah um, i just checked while um while you, you were doing yeah. the video and we don't have any up at this time so, oh okay but they will be up by yeah. tonight so yeah. um i'll get those added so okay. that uh, people can order online so yeah so these are these are the and, you, and uh, I have to take the pictures too, so that, that's holding you up. But these were the three new colors, the um, silver and turquoise, is that on there? No. Silver and turquoise, the brick, uh, red brick and the gold. And I love this one just because I like earth tones, the copper and the bronze with the copper and the little tassels. Um, I know we have this, we restocked this one. This is really nice because it's got the natural leather. Um, and so it doesn't have the shine that the other ones do. And this is, I think it's uh, called blue, uh, blue and brown. And that's got a, um, a, I think that's a copper, copper. Um, and I know there's a two-tone turquoise one that we also will be, um, adding to the website so the, there's some some options for you if you want to do these at home and i think you'll find the instructions are um will be useful for you to refer to again and again if you like to make more of them uh, the other and you'll get the written instructions plus you got the video so yeah you can't go wrong yeah that. <laughs> yeah there's written instructions there's the graphic and then now you'll have the video access um a couple things i just wanted to say uh, remember our websites letsbead.com um we um for questions are uh, this is on the website but it's info at letsbead let, and uh, dot com dot com and um i hope most of you know about um carly's facebook or our the store's um facebook group um and that you join that that's at facebook.com um, forward slash groups forward slash let's speed um, it's a private group so we don't get any um, unwanted advertisements or so forth in there but people can post their projects and uh, Carly does a weekly video and there's um, lots of uh, interesting things and um, it's a great way to enjoy beading and share with others so we hope you'll look into that oh, that's a lot of fun yeah. Okay. Well, thank so, you for uh, joining me. Just uh, two other things to, sure. to mention. So today you're you're open today until four, right? That's right. So, so people can, um, if if they wanted the kits, they could stop down today. You are offering curbside pickup too, if people don't want to come in. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you've got the the boards and the kits available. Uh, yes, they're all set to go. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The kits and the boards are here. Um, just call ahead and we can process your a charge uh, over the phone. So we have it all ready for you to bring it out when you when you come in. Yeah. And then even after um, so once the mandates in place where, you know, the store can't be open, people can still order through the online store. Correct. Yeah, um, the best way to do that would be go, to go to the um, info, to leave us a message at info at letspeed.com. Is it, it's info at letspeed.com, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. And well, leave us a message. If it's on our website, they can just go Or to Facebook, website. yeah. And, um, and if, you, if there's something you need, um, we'll uh, 
get back to you about um, whether we have it in stock and um, um, we could process the payment and we definitely will, will um, um, ship um, kits or uh, store stock to you as well. Awesome. Okay. All right, well, thank you, and um, we wish you good health, and um, we hope everybody uh, does well through this trying time, and uh, hope that beading and your crafting hobbies at least help you a little bit through this challenging time. Take care, and Carly Thanks and I, bye, everybody. say goodbye.